lay warden. The street is narrow, cobbled. Tall houses rise on either side. Only a thin rectangle of sky remains. The door opens onto a steep stairway. A rusting bike stands pressed against the wall. Inside, Vermeer's viewpoint draws the eye. Across the street, the only sign of life is flowers. Six single-stemmed gerbera daisies stuck to the glass in plastic test tubes. Here, empty wine bottles litter the sill, dripping coloured wax from their plugged tops and postcards of Klimt's paintings lie on the floor. Our bedroom has two doors. One leads to rooftops and a metre square of shade. It's where I go to focus on slate tiles tilting towards the sky. Umbrella Graveyard. As I carry you through the umbrella graveyard, you say our place will be rainless, waterless, untouched by the blue burning floods that break and scatter the silver frames and mute the body's electricity. My heart's no good. My heart has a blank gaze when you tell me our place will be safe, tucked away in the rocky coastline. But I have an affinity for lightning and love to stir the air like a tornado, and I'm not sure your house will hold us both. My umbrella and I have a memory of a many-winged wildness, and even in rear view, it burns me for a moment as I remember every flight, every inversion, every time I carried it back and my heart was pumping blood and rushing to close the trap door on what I forgot, what I never knew. That my place is in the storm, five stories above, dangling my legs and dreaming of manta rays and noodles, stray cats and falling leaves that scream until the air stops. This is my factory where I cast the rain and free the umbrellas from earth, where ice blue hands give in to the wind's push and everyone at once lets go. The name of the poem is called Goldfish Autobiography. I believe there is a way to go, an inverted map delineating the toponymy and topography of lies that lead to truth. I used to say, someday I'll write a poem that says it all, but plain. I'm not sure what I meant by that. Not sure who I was back then, no more than I am now. So I'll scrape about the edges of the truth. Where to begin this time? Gormless, lobotomized, half-drunk, foolish. That's me beside the looker in pale pink. Absurd how easy I can blot her out and focus on my death pale skin and frosted hair. Still pitifully vain. I only see myself in photos now. Mind measuring the time it took to get from there to here. I can't go back, I think, to what I was. Even if I could be sure of who I am or was, I'd never mind. Better to start again from scratch. I think that must be what I meant by plain. And take the direct route. It has to do with time and age and other things I never understood and how that understanding only comes in time with age and waste and sorrow, fear also. Fell abstractions piled up at my door. Better to be the virgin page or the pen, perhaps the ink or even the empty cartridge discarded by the warm remains than be the owner of the hand that's guided by a mind that does not know itself. I believe there is a way to go. I used to say, someday I'll write a poem that says it all, but plain. Laundry. Here in the Indian foothills, I share a house with a man from Greece, who speaks no English perfectly, disappears for days on a motorbike, leaves his laundry on the low makeshift line, grieving an absent son. Side by side they hang, his shirt my summer dress, as if they know each other well, and when he returns, smelling of engine oil, monsoon, rolled brown cigarettes, we have no formal language to share our separate joy. Drip, drip on the balcony, a queer white pool gathers below. He holds at a sleeve, looks to sky. I open my palm for signs of rain. Mm -hmm. 